up next, we have a very exciting session. Uh, everyone, please welcome with me uh, Mr. Sunjay Kant. You are welcoming back this remarkable speaker. We've had him on the panel earlier today, here to discuss asset-based securities on blockchains, a trillion dollar industry. Mr. Sanjay Kant, as you know, is the founder and president of Istakapaza Inc., a blockchain-based ecosystem commerce platform that simplifies home mortgage and reduces friction for every participant. Everyone, welcome him back on stage with a huge resounding round of applause. Namaste, guys. Uh, morning, everyone. I've been jet-lagged. I just flew in from Central America. Uh, we are opening our first digital bank, and obviously, uh, it feels good uh, to be back on stage after 23 years. Uh, we are in the business of making money, so always the guys who make money tend to stay back. The tech guys have to come in front. So my team said, you guys have to go and speak. I'll try to make this session a little bit more entertaining, because obviously, we all are here for a purpose to see how to make money, right? Nobody cares a damn about what goes behind. So that's the fact. <clears throat> Well, I mean, as the subject itself says, they forgot to change the, uh, uh, the presentation which we had the uh, subject on. Is it, it is asset-based securities on the blockchain. Uh, what we do basically is, I'm a lender myself. Uh, we operate in 22 states in the US, done about uh, $2.5 billion in loans. And whatever we have found is based more on uh, necessity to the problems that uh, was existing with us which I'll walk you through the presentation and you'll know. <clears throat> what is securitization? I mean, I'll just try to simplify it without getting much into the details. Uh, typically, what happens is when anybody buys a home, and I'm sure a lot of people buy homes, and most of them buy it through uh, getting a loan. Uh, every bank gives a loan, and then uh, uh, in the US and in most of the developed countries, pool it, like uh, let's take 100 or 200, or in the US, it's the minimum pool size is 250. They securitize and sell it to hedge funds, mutual funds, or any other participants on the Wall Street. That's what typically origination to securitization is, which we have kind of done it on the blockchain. And by doing this, what happens is, uh, the process takes about three months, which we reduce it in uh, three weeks, thereby increasing the liquidity uh, by doing in the block. If you have seen, most of the countries, uh, I mean, let's take India, for example, uh, the banks who give the loans actually service it. But as we speak, even India is looking towards securitization. The reason is that it will bring in more liquidity into the ecosystem. And uh, you know, this will also help putting more people in homes by reduction of interest rates and more capital to be deployed. Uh, I, as I said, I just came from uh, uh, my tour of Latin America where you know, we are looking to increase the GDP. And uh, how do we do it? I mean, by putting more money and more, putting more people at home, uh, in homes rather. So this is what we are trying, uh, we have already done. I mean, ours is not vaporware, or we are not coming here to say that, hey, this is our pilot mode, and we are trying and doing it. We have processed about $500 million uh, of loans in the US on the block. Uh, I mean, the other. Uh, Things also, if you see, as, as they said, developing countries also are adapting to securitization. And the only reason they are doing it is to increase liquidity in the market. I mean, this is the, uh, the benefits of putting a loan on the block. I'll tell you a typical example, which I said in my earlier slide. A typical pool size is about 200, 250 million in the US. So once the pool is accumulated, it then goes to the rating agencies like Moody's, Fitch, or S&P. Usually, two rating agencies have to rate the loans. And then they put it, uh, you know, whatever the rating is, whether it is a AAA, double B, or whatever the rating is. Accordingly, they try to sell uh, the loans off their uh, pools. To do this, it takes anywhere between two to three months on an average. But when we get the originator, I mean, when we get the borrower themselves on the block, the entire process becomes seamless. And you know, when it's seamless, obviously, the transfer of loans get much faster. And uh, I mean, the reputation of uh, process is not there. You know, every single time when I sell my loan from A to B and B to C, the same process 
is reviewed by all the uh, people in the, on the ecosystem. But when we put it on the block, as we all know, you know, you can only, uh, what do you call, add to it. You cannot delete or amend any of the uh, um, documents or any of the transactions that has been done. Thereby increasing the transparency and obviously reduces the uh, uh, friction on the same. What is uh, orchestrating MBS via uh, RWA NFTs? MBS is nothing but uh, mortgage-backed securities. Uh, for those who know, uh, at least in the US, it's a $12 uh, trillion dollar, uh, market, uh, which is roughly about 60% of the US GDP. So what we do in uh, US is, instead of NFTizing the asset, we NFTize the loan wherein it has all the records of the borrower, uh, which is completely GDPR compliant, he can share, unshare. And then not only that, the entire servicing record of the loan itself is there. So if somebody wants to buy a loan, and then, uh, I mean, when I say the pool of loan, the entire track is listed on the NFT. That is what we do. And by doing this, what will happen? If you remember 2008 crisis, Nobody knew which loans were falling off and which, which were the loans that were performing. A, con a thing like that will not happen uh, unless, you know, I mean, it will not happen. There is no unless here. So that is one of the reasons why even banks are adapting to it. I mean, and the other reason I, which I also said in, uh, during my panel discussion is we make so much money, we are resistant to change. We do not want to change. And that's the reason why adaptation of blockchain in our industry has become a tad bit difficult, but we are working through it and we are the only lender, as I said, uh, who is originating and securitizing on the block. This is the kind of workflow that I just mentioned uh, uh, during my, uh, uh, I mean, during my conversation. So typically what happens is a loan is uh, funded uh, by a correspondent bank which then flows through the cycle. If the loan is, uh, what we are doing is we are NFTizing the loan. If the asset itself can be NFTized, like in countries like Switzerland or Liechtenstein, we are, uh, we are completely uh, putting the asset itself on the NFT, but wherever it's not, then we are making the loan as an NFT. Then which will be, uh, what we are saying is, we are making the NFT of NFTs, like all these loans, we are making them as a pool of NFTs which can be subsequently sold and mainly this is being done to reduce friction and reduce times thereby increasing uh, the cash flows which I told earlier. I mean for people who have been in the banking industry this was uh, more relevant uh, and they can uh, look at this you know in a um, and they can understand it much better. Typically what happens is there are correspondent lenders who get large warehouse lines from the banks and the banks then go, I mean, the correspondent banks then go ahead and uh, disperse the loans to the uh, borrowers. And then, I mean, all the HME participants, let, that is home mortgage uh, ec uh, uh, ecosystem participants like appraisal companies, title companies, all these participants are also made a part of the ecosystem. This is very critical because I'll tell you a small example. Uh, not taking much of your time because I'll also open it for some questions if there is any. Uh, <clears throat> let's take the home as a price for 400,000, whatever the currency is. And uh, the seller says, no, 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 this is not 400, I, have four, I need about 425. And the appraiser goes back and says, hey, you know, there is $25,000 more in development that is done. Like, for example, he has put a porch at the back, there is a swimming pool uh, that is done, which was not included. And this gets upgraded to 425. But the guy who is buying the loan does not know why it actually went for 400 to 425. So when it is getting rated, what happens is they rate it as 425. But, but I am the guy who is buying the loan. So I have to decide or at least do my risk aversion for 400 or 425. So it's up to me who's, uh, to consider it. So by putting it on the block, I actually know why it went from 400 to 425. So we are making all the other participants also to be a part of the blockchain. This is one of the significant things that we have done. And if you have seen uh, in the US, um, which is as I said, um, 3.6 trillion of new mortgages get done, uh, at least got done last year. Uh, Non-qualified uh, was a very small percentage. 
about 2 or 3 percent of the total industry. But these are the ones, but anything that you speak in our industry is still billions. So the adaptation of blockchain happens when the transaction size is also big. We all speak about, you know, uh, putting uh, fish on the blockchain, selling pomegranates on the blockchain. We also are doing it, by the way, with all due respect. But what we are saying is ultimately we'll have to put the money inside. Nobody cares. I mean, at least I don't care. People do care, but they are the gourmet kind of people which constitute to 0.001% who care where their fish came from, who care where their pomegranate came from. I am a guy who, who is hungry, I'll eat the fish. I don't care where it came from. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the non-qualified mortgages are a slightly higher risk uh, category of investments and uh, that goes into private label securitization. Uh, this doing it on the block um, and I keep saying that we are the only company because we are the only ones who bring the borrower on the blockchain whereas everybody else the source of truth is the pool itself so they say okay I put it on the block I mean they just say okay I am validating the truth so no but the borrower has to validate the truth and then commercial ownerships is the same thing we can do the same for commercial as well and the, uh, the most important thing is we have been able to convince people to adapt to the technology, which is the most difficult thing. We are currently running pilots with Moody's. <coughs> Moody's is a giant. You know, they are rating agencies. They seldom come on the block. They say, you know, these are processes that we would not like uh, to get it implemented on the blockchain. But we are working very actively in Mood with Moody's uh, in the US and Europe. I mean, beyond uh, mortgages, I mean, I just, we just, chose mortgages as a topic because everyone relates to it. Everyone's, I mean, dream or aspiration is to buy a home and that's what, uh, uh, that's the reason and that's the biggest use case, at least by far. And for me, putting the mortgages in the blockchain is a global phenomenon. It's not restricted to UAE or US or India or anywhere. By doing this, I think, uh, uh, mortgages globally, even uh, guys from DeFi can invest, it, uh, invest in the same. I'll tell you an example. Uh, as I said, my presentation is more for reference, but I'll speak to you more on the business use case. Uh, I came from Latin America, and there's a country which wants to develop an entire city by raising money from DeFi, which is completely legalized. Uh, they want to give returns <coughs> in the range of 8 or 9%. But you know, DeFi guys are used to 25% and also getting screwed. I'm sorry for my language, but this is something real. Our eth we, we are ethnic, I mean, at least I'm ethnic. Ethnic has the lowest default rates, whether it's a Latino, Asian, or any Asian, they do default less on their homes. So I was, the governments were talking to me and saying, hey, why don't we build an entire city for affordable housing and put the people back in homes and raise money on DeFi? So my first question to them was, what interest rates can, you, uh, can we afford to give them? So they said between 8 to 10. They said that could fly, considering the treasury rates, uh, US mortgage, I mean bond rates are at 4.35 or 4.37, whatever the last that I saw. So if we're able to give 8 or 10, maybe, but then we'll have to tokenize the rest of the returns and then go through the whole gambit, which they're very keenly uh, looking into it, and maybe in the next six months we should uh, uh, come out with the announcement on the same. Uh, the other thing is money markets. Uh, we are working with one of the topmost banks to enable the, reco uh, the repo markets using uh, tokens of both the entities, ours and as well as theirs. We are also working with uh, a farming community in Central America. I'm, I'm sure everybody would have eaten McDonald's and uh, Burger Kings here. The sesame that sits on the uh, bun is coming from uh, Central America. And we are working with the farmers there and putting their entire process on the blockchain. And also, we all speak about contract farming, but how many times have we seen the farmer actually getting financed at a lower interest rate? So we are doing forward uh, contracting for the farmers and also enabling them to get the finances. And uh, the other thing which we are already doing is, uh, in India, we are working in uh, the automotive aftermarkets, uh, whereas where there's a lot of, uh, I would not say, a, uh, false parts, but spur uh, spurious parts, if that's the right word. So we are speaking to manufacturers and saying, hey, we can actually deploy the uh, 
the original products on the, the serviced vehicles or the vehicles that are getting serviced. And that's one thing that we have been working with Honda, TVS, and other big manufacturers in uh, India at least for now. Digital banking, uh, we'll be operating our first digital bank uh, in uh, Latin America. We all speak, you know, there is a lot of things that we always say, okay, we'll do this blockchain, we'll do this, we'll do that. But seldom do people do it. You know, there are only two ways. We always say either do it the Elon Musk way or the conventional way. And this is not something that I said. <laughs> There's somebody who was so well read, who is Harvard, Stanford alumni, I'm not. So he said, you do it Elon Musk way. So I said, what the hell is Elon Musk way? So he said, go and do it your way. So I said, okay, that's what I've been doing. So I'm a lender, then I went to the government and said, I would like to set up a digital bank, make it completely seamless, give wallets, thereby you can also uh, um, issue subsidies through them. And I come from India, right, wherein uh, our prime minister about 10 years back said Jandan scheme with uh, zero balance. Everybody said, who the hell is going to open the accounts? But then now we have reached 67%. So if we go and uh, go into Central America or the Latin American countries and we are doing the same, there's been a tremendous acceptance. In fact, three countries are giving us license to operate as a digital bank. So that's, that's how we are uh, moving. And we are also licensed money transfers. Uh, we, we are also licensed to do money transfers in all the 50 states in the US. GDPs of countries in Latin America depend on money that is getting transferred from the US up to 30%. So that we are working actively with the central banks of the respective countries to do the same. So I think with this, I, I can, uh, I'll end my uh, presentation. If there is any questions, I'll take. I know the time is short, but if there is any, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you very much.